entrepreneur thinks that with the right technology, anyone can buy and sell a home. Let's hear why. Please welcome Lindsay McLean, CEO of Home Lister. I want a rousing applause. This woman doesn't normally come on stage. Uh, she's starting something brand new that will rub some of you the wrong way. So let's give her a round of applause for courage. <laughs> in a country where we love innovation, keep applauding, and entrepreneurship, right? Thank Lindsay. You, Thank you. And so let's jump into it. When I met you in my favorite coffee shop at 11th Street and 6th Avenue, the French Roast, yep. you walked in and I knew you went to Wharton, so you're a smart person. You had worked in real estate a little bit. Mm -hmm. in Home to list. Maybe you guys can give me a mic. Can help. Seth Godin told the story that the only time in 30 years his mic didn't work was when they put two mics on him. In 30 years with my mic, the only time it didn't work was when they put two mics on me. I have two mics here. <laughs> so there's a lesson. Does that work? Or maybe it's just me. Good. They're sick of hearing from me. No, you're good. Okay, good. Um, so Lindsay, let's go back. And so tell us a little bit about that experience you had that inspired you. You were working in the home to list, is that what they call it? What's the word? These, get, these people will know what it is. So flat fee MLS. Flat, flat fee MLS. Yeah, so um, my background has a lot of different twists and turns. Of, you know, I'm originally a technology person, uh, engineering background, uh, and was in technology for a long time. Um, went through the whole dot com bust and decided to get out of it and get into real estate. Um, and I was a real estate developer for a while uh, and had a real estate energy engineering services company uh, and sold that. And then I ended up doing some consulting in the flat fee MLS industry. Um, and it, it opened my eyes to a piece of the industry that most people don't really know about. Um, and the, the thing that's really interesting about flat fee MLS is that for people who go into it serious and know what they're doing and they're generally second or third time home sellers, uh, it's been very successful for them. And so what that really inspired me to do was to look at how the industry treats people who uh, want to do this for themselves and have the, uh, or, or can't afford to do it for, for, uh, with a full service broker. And these are people at the lower end of the market where the commission is a bigger problem economically. Yeah, it tends to be people, it, it's, not, it's not solely at the lower end of the market, but it's very concentrated there. Um, and, you know, for somebody who has zero equity in their home and they're coming out of pocket to pay a broker commission, for a lot of them they can't actually afford it. Um, so if you look at the market, uh, about a third of the bottom of the market has, ne has zero equity, negative equity. Um, and if you look at what's called uh, effective net equity, that means someone who can't afford to sell their home, pay a broker, pay the closing costs, and then buy another home. They wouldn't have enough money left for a down payment that starts to approach 40% of the, bottom, of the bottom third of the market. What would you say if I said, well, hey, wait a second. I, like I use a realtor when I sell a home, and not to hang out with realtors, but to actually get the highest possible value and not try to eliminate the contingent liability and to leave no money on the table. And a good, experienced sales agent helps me get that. So even if I'm at the bottom end of the market, if that agent is able to get more for the house, then this whole issue of commission isn't really relevant. What's your argument to that? So if you, if you look at, um, if you look specifically at flat fee MLS, so these are people that are effectively doing for sale by owner, but they have a listing on the MLS. Um, and so, so they're, pay they're paying to get on the MLS. It's they're paying uh, you a, few, know, hundred a bucks. few hundred bucks, anywhere from 200 to $1,000, depending on what they're paying for to get on the MLS, but they want to do a lot of the work themselves. So they have effectively a limited services agent representing them. Right. And that's um, about 10% of the market? Uh, so it's about 9% does flat fee MLS. So I, I think the most generally accepted number right now is 12% is straight for sale by owner, which means there's no agent involved at all. And another 9% is uh, a limited services agent, so, or flat fee MLS. So now let's move quickly. So that's the, the you got the background, gang? <laughs> Smile, it's okay. <laughs> uh, so Lindsay, now you're taking that kind of market and you're zooming in on them. Yes. Kind of like Uber zoomed in on luxury cars Upper East Side for moms that want to ship their babies to school. 
you're taking a segment of the market to focus on. So you're not going after all of these people's lunch. You're <laughs> going after the market that has already want to do a FISBO or they want to list it themselves right. so, so if and offering at, a better experience. What is the yeah. current experience? Why is it bad? What's the problem you're solving? Well, so, okay, so let me take both of those. So the first is that if you put those together, you have about 20% of the market that already doesn't really use a full service agent. Um, and so for those people, the current experience is pretty rough unless you've done it you know, five or six times on your own. If, you're, if you want to do it uh, and you're trying to figure out you know, what your legal disclosures are, how to find a photographer that's good at, at real estate photography, uh, what, you know, what are the best ways to, to stage a home or hold open houses, that advice, like there's a lot of advice out there on random Zillow discussion boards or a few websites, but it's very difficult to put that whole experience together in an easy way, especially on the legal side. So if you're talking about the disclosures, it's different from state to state. Most people don't even know where to go to find that information. And so our focus is really taking that, ex is revolutionizing the experience of for sale by owner and saying there's no reason why just because you want to do this th yourself for whatever reason, whether you can't afford to do something else uh, or you don't like realtors or whatever, or, uh, whatever your reason, uh, there's no reason why you can't have a high degree of professionalized help to do that. And so we take that and we put it into a, a website and an app that walks people through the process, helps Primarily them Primarily mobile though, out. right, as I understand it. It's, it you're emphasizing the mobile application part of it? So it's both. Okay. I mean, I think, you know, when you talk about creating a listing, most people are going to be doing that from their computers. Gotcha. Um, the part that I think will be a, a lot more interesting on the app side is once they're actually communicating with potential buyers. So much like a limited services agent, if somebody wants to see the home or, or, off, or creating an offer for them, that'll come through and give them easy communication and ways to respond in a way that looks professional on the other end. Right. So show us a couple of slides so we can get a feel for what you're doing. Sure. So the, uh, okay. So this is so when somebody goes to the website, let's, uh, what they do is they they go through and they create their listing themselves. So this is still very much in the where uh, uh, somebody who's selling their home and wants to do most of the work themselves. Um, but as they go through, they they take most of the details, they put it into the website, and they can step their way through and create the basis of, of a listing. We then turn that into an MLS listing for them. So they fill out all the relevant forms. Now, no one's helping them there, though, right? So no one is helping them. How many them. home sellers know what the heck to put in there so, without a realtor? So the majority of these questions are fairly straightforward. Everybody knows how many bedrooms and, home, uh, and bathrooms, square footage. We provide all of their tax information for them on the back end. Um, and there are a few questions that are maybe questionable, in which case we have help available. They can call an 800 number, or 855 number is our number, uh, or uh, we have help through chat as well to help gotcha. them answer questions. But so most you, of these questions are reasonably straightforward. There so are the presumption here, I assume some of this is generational, that this is a DIY, self-reliant, digitally, you know, used to filling out forms, or is that not your mark? Is it an old guy like me, or is it young... Millennials. It, it does. It does tend to skew younger. Um, and millennials are certainly more comfortable with this. But we're also. It's designed. The for sale by owner market is largely in the 35 to 55 range at this gotcha. point. Mostly because they're repeat sellers. Very few first time sellers want to do this on their own. Gotcha. Um, and uh, so if you're if you're and we're specifically targeting people who have already decided to do for sale by owner. So they're people who've already gone through this thought process of what do I need to think about in my home in, in order to, to list it. Gotcha. So let's keep going. Should sure. we show another slide? So here's one of the important things for us because we're, create, we're helping them get on the MLS. Um, and so obviously we're encouraging them to pay a buyer's broker commission. Um, you know, so you are already, you're starting out there saying... We're starting out with the recommendation that buyer's broker, if you want a buyer's broker to bring buyers to your home and help sell your home, then, if, then they get their side of the commission. So technically you're a seller's agent here because yep. you're licensed. Yes. Or you couldn't put it on the MLS. Right. And you're delivering your services virtually as right. opposed to in person. So uh, that's right. So I mean, slowly but surely you're going to morph into like Redfin, which morphs into Cobalt Banker and <laughs> we're all the same. It seems to happen. But distinguish now the offer to the consumer that is different than morphing into that. So... Uh, 
well, they're, they're full service agents. I mean, they, they're discount agents or, or, or non-discount full service agents. Redfin is moving away from, from discount, uh, discounting their services at this point. But um, essentially what we're doing is we are taking the broker experience or the agent experience and saying... On the sell side. On the sell side and saying, there, you know, we can break this down into the components. There's no reason why you have to buy the entire 6% worth of services. Or now, 3%. When you were, in, when you were you, a couple of years in the list, to, what is again the term? Flat fee MLS. Flat fee MLS. Uh, we're, were there agents cooperating with you, or were they shunning you, or? In general, they, they were cooperating, because at least on the, on the buy side, they're still gonna get their commission. Right. Right, so there's no reason why, for them, uh, they wouldn't be showing that home. And, you know, in the age of Zillow and Trulia, if a buyer wants to see a home, you know, there are certainly agents out there that could do their best to discourage somebody, but if that's a great home, then somebody's gonna wanna see it. Do you, in a way, demean the role of the seller agent by suggesting this is enough for the seller? So there, I mean, there are clearly homes, people out there, homes out there that require the services of a full service agent. Um, there are, you know, it, I'm not demeaning the role of a full service agent, but what I'm saying is there exists a portion of this market that has already decided that's not what they want. Gotcha. And so for those people, there's no reason why they shouldn't be getting more help than they're getting. By the way, gang, if you have questions you want to ask of Lindsay, we'll open it up. Um, so what step are we on now? We're still on... Commission. We're, oh, we're on... We're way down to six? You're way down to six. We just skipped a few there. Okay, now what's preview? Okay, so this is... Um, really, gang, any, anybody that wants to come up and ask a question, they should do it now. <laughs> so this is... Uh, so once you've created a listing for your home, this is the dashboard that somebody would see. Um, to manage their, uh, to, to manage the sale of their home. It goes, you know, it allows you to manage your photos, change your photos, edit captions, things like that. Manage open houses and showings. Uh, buyer communication can come directly in. Uh, offers can be submitted directly into the app. Um, and advertising and services. So services would be, let's say you want a professional photographer or a yard sign, a lockbox, things like that. Gotcha. She's doing a good job, isn't she? We should cheer her on. One, a round of applause for courage. Uh, what's the next step here? Is that it? Uh, I, th I don't know. I think that's the last uh, screenshot you've got there. Now, you have in there documents and contracts. Are those just documents and contracts for them to look at, or do you actually try to facilitate the close. Is that in version so one? By also, the way, when are you launching, Lindsay? So we are launching next week in California. Which part of California? All over? It'll be most of California. Most of California. Not the Bay Area, but most of everywhere else. But you're based in New York? We're based in New York and California. Gotcha. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry, what was the question? Um, I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> but let's, let's give it to, in, tell us who you are and then fire away. Hey, um, my name's Barbara Hakeem. I'm in the Boston area with Colwell Banker. You're very brave um, to talk to us about this because I know it's a very intriguing and very uh, frightening kind of um, presentation. My question is simply... In Speak our, up. We can't hear you very in, well. In our business, we based our pricing on comps, pricing that's um, generally speaking listed by agents, so the commission is incorporated in those comps and an intelligent buyer, a seller, they all know that. So the commission that you're quote unquote saving, is it really being saved because your comps are going to not be consistent with the ones there if you're paying out less? So Thank you for the question. Did you understand I'm it? I'm not quite sure I understood. So you're asking if, um, if you're actually saving the commission if, if they're not pricing the home appropriately? Well, the buyer knows that they're not um, paying that commission out and I think they're going to expect some kind of discount. Um, I see. discount. So, Which uh, means that the seller has to lower the price and then it makes up for the difference of the commission. That's certainly, I mean, that's certainly possible. Uh, there, you know, that, that happens now. Certainly buyers show up uh, to sellers without agents and say, hey, you're not going to pay my half. You know, will you discount it? And some do and some don't, and that'll be up to them to decide. It's a negotiating point. But there, I mean, so these are the customers that we're talking about are people who are going to do for sale by owner no matter who helps them, whether they're on their own or we help them out. And so they'll have to make that decision either way. By the way, this is a very serious enterprise, and I'm, I'm going to, I think we have one more question, but I want to wish you luck, and uh, we'll hope to see you back next year.